session then uh, so yes. hello good, good evening to one and all this is uh, osama khan uh, i'll be presenting the webinar on the design philosophy of uh, metro bridges so i uh, we shall start this uh, session okay so first of all a brief introduction about myself uh, i'm as uh, miss uh, as our host mr chaitanya siresha uh, introduced me uh, i'd like to add up like uh, i'm currently uh, deputing my responsibilities as the head of operations uh, engineering operations in doha uh, as well as i was a part of the design team that uh, delivered the mumbai and pune metro projects okay i uh, apart from this i also founded uh, bridgehawk bridgehawk is uh, a platform okay not a company yet it is a platform that uh, dedicates itself to uh, reimagining the concepts of bridge engineering okay so what we basically do is that we uh, try to present the uh, design aspects of bridge engineering to students and professionals in a way that they can better understand it okay so you can follow uh, bridgehawk on youtube and uh, on the website all right so without much ado i i'd like to start so with the basic question uh what are bridges okay so bridge uh, typically is a structure which is built to span a physical obstacle okay and this is done without trying to block the way underneath so that the traffic keeps on flowing beneath it and uh, the bridge also delivers the vehicles above it is also constructed for the purpose of providing a passage over the obstacle all right so the basic design idea for bridges is that the supports must be strong enough to hold the structure and the span between the uh, supports must be strong enough to carry the loads so with this basic idea uh, in mind all the components of bridge are uh, designed okay in order to achieve this design there are number of codes okay we've got american codes british code european as well as we've got an indian code okay so based on what region you are trying to design a bridge uh, bridge in uh, it is going to define what what parameters and what codes that you are going to follow okay so the design process uh, can be divided into four basic stages the first is a conceptual design second is a preliminary and later on we go for the detailed design and then the construction design so moving forward uh, we have different types of bridges all right so it depends upon the client what type of bridge or what type of uh, structure uh, is required maybe some projects might have an aesthetic uh, aesthetic appeal and some of them might not all right so based on what is the problem statement or what sort of problem is supposed to be solved the bridge type is decided and this is completely decided by the client or the government authority whoever is uh, in charge of the project project so these are a few type of bridges suspension bridges so we've got a big cable uh, suspended uh, with uh, suspended stays which is uh, holding the gird uh, girder this is the shanakli bridge in turkey we've got uh, balanced cantilever bridges trunian uh, bridges which will open for uh, the passage of boats below we also have tied arch bridges which is uh, based on uh, the principle of uh, arch which is stressed we've got arch bridges in a similar uh, way made up of uh, the arch which is made up of a steel truss with uh, anchors at both the ends we have we also have cable stayed bridges so the cable stayed bridges uh, we've got multiple multiple variations of what uh, cable stayed bridges can be so this is a single stay ca uh, cable bridge this uh, this being a double stayed uh, cable bridge extra dose bridges which are somewhat similar to cable stayed bridges but the only thing is that the uh, the pylon the pylon is not as long as cable stayed bridges uh, the girder is mostly a part of uh, uh, mostly a part of the structure the pylon is mostly, mostly a part of the girder masonry bridges which are obsolete now steel truss bridges uh, trunian bridges Uh, this is rather a unique uh, style and design of a bridge over here you can see the counterweight so the basic principle is that uh, uh, basically you just bring the cg cg of the bridge from here to over here so when we do this uh, the bridge will lift up so i think even this is no more in use it's also obsolete uh, a special kind of uh, bridge with a mechanical augmentation like a lift bridge it will 
but basically the central span will lift up. Uh, over here is the machine assembly. Okay. And finally, we'll come to the beam bridge. Okay. So uh, in most of my webinar, uh, for a, a, a larger part of my webinar, I'll be speaking upon beam bridges. Why? Because this is one of the most common type of bridges and the easiest to install. And especially in an urban environment, it is uh, highly preferred that the traffic is not uh, stopped and we have an easy installation of the bridge and uh, a successful launch of the girder. All right, so beam bridges is the simplest and most uh, inexpensive kind of a bridge. And uh, as, as the name suggests, it is a simply supported beam. All right, so we've all designed simply supported beams in our RCC subjects in engineering. So basically the force is going to create compression on top and tension at bottom. So in the same way, we'll have to design tendons and uh, make the beam post tension on this principle. So basically these are very easy to construct and they're widely used in urban uh, and rural zones. The only disadvantage is that maybe when we have uh, large spans, if the span is too long, the depth of the beam might be higher, all right? So in that case, maybe you'll have to go for a different uh, kind of a girder, okay? And uh, people might not find this beam to be very aesthetically spectacular, okay? It looks uh, quite mundane, if I may, something like this. All right, so basically if uh, going into some detail, basically these are all these, what you see, these are uh, I section beams. And this going uh, horizontally is uh, bracing, or you can see the central diaphragm. All right, this is uh, put so that we have the girders in place. Okay. This over here is the deck, and these are piers. We'll uh, go into much detail about the design in the slides to come up next. So now coming to our main talk, metros. So what are metros? So basically they're actually called as MRT, which is urban mass rapid transit systems. Okay, these are elevated railway transit systems with the tracks supported above the street level on a viaduct superstructure other uh, or any other elevated structure. So the materials which are used to, uh, to make these viaducts are usually either from steel, from concrete, prefabricated members, post-tension concrete, or uh, you might use a mixture of more than one materials. Maybe the girder might be of uh, steel and the deck slab would be concrete. Okay. So if in most cases, if you are using a I section, which is a steel I section plate girder, mostly what will have is a concrete girder. Uh, sorry. Uh, if you have a I section steel girder, you'll have a concrete deck. Okay. So in that way, this would become as a composite uh, bridge. This would be categorized as a composite bridge. So uh, uh, in our future, uh, for the slides, we've got some design philosophy, which will deal with composite bridges also. All right. So basically, if we look at the structure, it can be divided into three uh, different parts, which is a substructure, a superstructure, and the foundation. All right. So yes, uh, I believe many of you might have traveled in metros. So usually what is, uh, uh, what is what, what the distance between two stations is kept at two to three kilometers. All right. And uh, I'll share some more knowledge about this in the further slide. Like for example, if you've, uh, if you've got a city and we have to create a layout of uh, metro lines, okay? So what we don't do is, is that we don't take a single metro line that goes and traverses all the uh, important locations, okay? So the basic idea is to have different lanes, different lanes that um, go around the city so that they provide easily accessible transport to everyone. It is also called as multimodal transportation system. Multimodal is that, for example, in order to get to the metro station, you'll take a bus. Okay, so now you have used the bus to be transported to the metro station, and now you're taking the metro to go wherever you want to go. All right, so you're now, in order to reach your destination, you have used two different modes of transport. So this is called as multimodal. Okay, so the idea is to have Okay, so the idea is to have different lines and to place different stations at different lines and to create junctions. So for example, as of now, if you see over here, we've got a green line, 
we have got a yellow line and a blue line okay and these are stations so as i mentioned earlier the distance between two stations is usually kept at 2 to 3 kilometers okay and these lines these are uh, you can say this is the center line of the track okay so maybe this might be two track uh, metro system and just imagine if you were to have a single metro system that goes everywhere else you will need to have a num have multiple number of uh, railway tracks okay so once you do something like this so people can change their uh, destination uh, sorry uh, the lines on junctions okay so these are normal metro stations and these are junctions so basically if you see uh, cities which recently might have had metro stations are quite resolved they are easily uh, uh, what you can say mappable so this is uh, in front of you are two metros uh, this is doha metro and dubai metro so if you can see doha metro is divided to three lines red line green line and yellow line and over here in mushrib you have got a junction wherein you can go from either from yellow line to red line or to the green line at albida station you have got a junction which by which you can uh, coming from uh, somewhere over here to somewhere in albida you can change and you can go to a different line similarly in dubai metro you can have uh, over here we have got two lines i believe this is the or the orange section i believe this is the tram and these are only two lines so this is quite simple but uh, why because these are planned cities these are new cities but if you've got historic cities uh, the configuration usually becomes a bit more complicated like delhi metro if you see over here we've got uh, multiple lanes multiple lanes and part of it is also underground maybe there's also a transition uh, i have i haven't been uh, able to trans uh, travel in delhi metro but uh, if you see over here it is quite a hotspot all right so over here if you imagine that this is a city which is actually it's a living city okay so it is very important that whatever construction methodology you are using it ensures yeah. that by 11 fight to down to uh hello hello okay so whatever uh, sorry uh, coming back so whatever uh, construction method you use it should ensure that the city does not get stopped okay that the roads are still functioning and the least amount of infrastructure has uh, has to be dis disrupted okay so in that way it is very important that uh, a certain specific uh, construction method has to be chosen all right that is why it makes simply supported system so common and so favorite of everyone all right so over here is the general arrangement drawing and the general elevation drawing as i said over here that uh, the layout has to be divided into different lines so uh, you can assume that i am talking about a single a certain section of the layout okay maybe i am talking about this this section okay so before we have to we, before we can design anything we need to have this drawing with us okay so before the general al alignment of the track has to be decided an extensive survey is performed a, a survey which includes all the details that might be helpful for us to design a metro system uh, around the city so this actually is uh, a drawing of uh, a flyover in indonesia of course for confidential reasons i cannot share the drawings of the the metros i have worked upon with you so but this as as well does the job okay so over here what you what you see over here is uh, this is the approach slab okay so typically in a metro system we don't have such an arrangement of an approach slab okay but these are the piers if you see over here the piers are named this is a a31 pb30 uh, pb1 pb2 p3 so pb is indicative of portal beam all right each of these piers in the plan over here you can see each of these piers have been named and the distances have been marked so over here what we see is that between pier pb3 and pb4 you've got a distance of 2500 uh, sorry 25000 meters over here we've got 3000 uh, meters of uh, distance similarly over here we've got 
This is showing the direction of as exactly where it is going. So in order for us to understand exactly what sort of uh, foundation we should use for these pairs, we should have a very resolved idea of what is the ground uh, condition. What does the ground look like? Or what is the uh, safe bearing capacity? Where is the water table? Where is the rock? So these details need to be at hand. Okay. The most important uh, thing in determining this is exactly what is this uh, safe bearing capacity of the soil and what is the rock. Like for example, if we have got a rock which is starting directly over here. Okay. This is the ground level. So we can think of having an open foundation. And maybe if the rock is well below and this is all sandy gravel, so maybe we'll have to go for a pile foundation. Okay. And even maybe have inclined piles. Okay. So over here, you can see this is a, a layout, the general layout of the project in a city. Okay. So uh, as I said, the type of bridge, the type of pier, the type of girder, everything has to be specified by the client. All right. So if we've got uh, like public works department of any state in India, which is uh, like, for example, it is planning for having a metro station in Chennai or maybe in Mumbai. So this authority 